Coming up on Ag Week TV, we're going to check out the inside of a steer's stomach. The latest on what's being done to combat the chemical resistant weeds invading fields across the country. And the sheep industry is enjoying growth in North Dakota and much of the country. Welcome to Ag Week TV. I'm Shauna Olson. We're hearing a lot these days about the growing problem of chemical resistant weeds, and there's good reason for that. Some farmers are being choked out of the business by those weeds. So far, it's a bigger problem in the South, but it's spreading fast. Rose Dunn joins us now with the latest on what's being done to combat the problem. Shauna, many weeds are now unfazed by Roundup and other chemicals that have been killing them for more than 20 years. Once you have resistance, you will always have resistance. The resistance is not going away. We've got to do things differently. The problem prompted Peterson Farm Seed of Harwood to bring together experts from the ag industry and academics for a day-long symposium recently. The chemical and seed companies have been working on solutions and there are some new products in the pipeline. Peterson hopes to help farmers here avoid financial disaster through education and awareness. The issue, honestly, has been that the farmers have been a little complacent because the history has been that whenever a problem, a weed problem or an insect problem or a disease problem arrives on the scene, very quickly the chemical companies or the ag input industry has an answer to that problem. And uh, we're kind of running out of those answers, so we're going to need to, to do some things that are a little out of the box from what our traditional strategies have been. Jonathan Siebert of Dow AgroSciences was one of several representatives of seed and chemical companies at the event. His company is launching the new Enlist weed control system. Enlist should be available for some crops this year. It's taken more than 10 years to develop it, but Siebert says it's very important to use any product properly so it remains effective for as long as possible. There are no silver bullets. Um, if these new technologies are not uh, used properly, um, we will met, be met with the same fate as, uh, as with glyphosate. So um, very important to, to spread the message on, on how to properly steward these technologies. This symposium was unique in that it was the first one sponsored by Peterson Farms Seed, bringing together experts that might not otherwise work together. Rose, you were there. How was the turnout? Good. It was a full house, more than 300 people learning about this very serious problem. Another common issue for farmers is chemical spray drift, but new tools can help reduce the problem. University of Minnesota Extension Crop Specialist David Nikolai says picking the right nozzle is the key to controlling drift and increasing the efficacy of spraying. He demonstrated some of the new and improved spray technology at the Best of the Best Research Workshop recently in Grand Forks. Small droplets can be carried farther by wind. The new nozzles produce larger droplets, which fall faster and are more likely to hit the target. Some of the new technology uh, over the last uh, decade or so has been to utilize nozzles that have air assist uh, situations with them or pre-orifice. Uh, the whole point of those uh, types of nozzles is to develop a medium to a coarse to even to an ultra coarse spray so that they can deliver product on target, not have it move off target with uh, wind speed, but yet deliver the, uh, uh, the kind of control that they're after. So we encourage people that are using coarse sprays to uh, consider enough water volume so that they get good control. Uh, however, on the other side, if they are using a flat fan tip, keep the pressure down, maybe to 30 to 40 pounds of pressure, and drive slow enough so they get good coverage. Some of the new technology is available now, and experts say the cost of the new nozzles is minor compared with the losses from spray drift. A series of hot topic ag issues were discussed at the University of Minnesota Crookston. Minnesota legislators joined ag experts to hear about the needs and issues in the upper Red River Valley. Ryan Laughlin has more. So that's a Phantomyces growing in there. We have watched the age of farmers uh, older and older, and the average age is now 58. Four Minnesota Republican House of Representative members met to discuss agriculture issues ranging from the aging demographic of farmers 
to what has been done about the avian bird flu problem, as Minnesota is the number one producers of turkey in the country. Not only did we put dollars into trying to figure out what is happening with avian flu and how, how to control it, but also put money into the research area because that needed to be updated. Representative Deb Keel, who serves as the vice chair of agriculture finance, points out how even though the percentage of the budget spent on ag is less than 1%, it's still important that the money goes to the right places. It has a large effect on Minnesota, especially, I would say, in this district. One of those people greatly affected by the flow of funds is Albert Sims, the director of operations of the Northwest Outreach and Research Center. Our uh, birth was in 1895, and it was designed uh, to do research on how to make the the soggy prairies of northwest Minnesota productive. And the politicians got to see what that looks like. They'll actually germinate and swim in the soil moisture to infect sugar beet roots. But now with crop prices down. We sold wheat at one time for nine dollars a bushel and that would be probably around four. Research entities are feeling the funds dry up. Right now there are, there are no extra dollars. Sims gets about half his budget from state dollars, a quarter from grants and gifts, and another quarter from farm commodities. With a short legislative session scheduled for March, Keel says it's unlikely there will be much noise made on the agricultural front. The concerns I have is maintaining our capacity uh, in not only equipment and, and facilities, but also personnel. So for now, Sims will see if he can grow his green elsewhere. Keel does say one ag issue that should be addressed in the March session is farm safety. Up next on Ag Week TV, what's being done to increase North Dakota commodity exports to the Middle East? How did we become the region's largest independent seed company? by taking a very simple, but powerful stand. We will sell no seed that we wouldn't be happy to plant on our own farm. Peterson Farm Seed, stand tall. Total Ag Industries is the leader in total control. Their custom-built fertilizer systems are the crown jewel of the Total Ag lineup. Total Ag systems come with a fully customizable fill system, and the variable rate hydraulic drive system works with John Deere displays for real-time feedback and complete fertilizer monitoring. Total Ag's field-tested design allows precise control and accurate application in your fields for better yields and more profit. Contact Total Ag by phone or visit TotalAg.com. temperatures from Grand Forks all the way to Williston, so stay warm out there. It'll never start. It'll start. When the last thing you need is equipment that won't start, turn up the heat with a portable Honda generator from Home of Economy. Rugged, dependable, and quite possibly the best friend you'll ever have on the job. Pick one up today at the guaranteed lowest price, only at Home of Economy, where your dollar buys more. Who do you call when you have grain dryer issues? His number is probably already on your phone. Guy Kittleson of American Farm Equipment, 701-793-8804. With over 35 years experience in grain dryer sales, Guy was grain dryers before grain dryers were cool. He sells and services American, Chief, and Deluxe grain dryers with capacities from 200 to 10,000 bushels per hour. Guy works on them all, but when it comes to confidence, and dependability in your grain dryer, buy from Guy. Guy Kittleson, American Farm Equipment. Drainage Solutions is experienced in the tri-state area. Their skilled employees will design, implement, and maintain the best drainage system available. Drainage Solutions uses state-of-the-art equipment along with the best data resources available to design a drainage system that they guarantee will be both efficient and cost-effective. Whether you're considering drain tile for the first time or adding to your existing drainage system, let Drainage Solutions design the most appropriate site-specific drainage for your needs. A group of North Dakotans recently returned from a trade mission that was the first of its kind. Reporter Tracy Frank is here with more. Tracy? Shana, on North Dakota's first trade mission to Israel, delegates met with Elbit Systems. It's a technology company collaborating with the Northern Plains UAS test site in Grand Forks and NDSU to fly the first large-scale, high-altitude unmanned aircraft systems. 
Initial operations will focus on precision agriculture research. While in Israel, North Dakota companies also met with potential buyers of specialty crop products like lentils, chickpeas, and flax. Part of the trip included North Dakota's second trade mission to Egypt. Egyptian consumers are interested in North Dakota's red lentils, flax, and fava beans. Based on the current situation in the world with you know, the high dollar value and uh, you know, exchange rates are not in our favor, Canadian dollar versus U.S. dollar is a challenge for us. So each new market we can enter and establish long-term relationships, it will pay benefits down the road. The trade mission was organized by the North Dakota Trade Office, Department of Agriculture, and Department of Commerce. The number of sheep in North Dakota was up 14% in 2015. That's the largest increase in the country. In fact, the sheep industry nationwide, which has been in a long-term decline, continued to rally last year, according to the USDA. The executive director of the American Sheep Industry Association says good meat prices have led some producers to expand their flocks and attract some young producers to the industry. Low feed prices are also helping expansion. There are currently about 5.3 million sheep in the U.S. The number is up despite smaller numbers in drought-stricken western states. I am encouraged with, uh, with the second year of, uh, of sheep inventory increasing. Part of it is I think we're stabilizing the numbers and the sheep may not be staying in the same part of the country, but they're staying uh, in production. We have a lot of producers that are selling now into the non-traditional market, uh, which takes one out of every three lambs produced in America. The USDA says sheep numbers are down by 5,000 in Minnesota and holding steady in South Dakota. Lambing season is just getting started for many producers around the region, but one South Dakota family is already winding down. Kenneth Kilber and his wife lamb about 450 ewes. They're about four weeks into lambing, and they're trying to finish lambing by April 1st. But this year, they're running about 10 days later than expected, possibly because of the warmer temperatures during breeding last summer. It's been very good. Uh... Took a little time to get going. I suspect that was on account of the hot summer that we had. The bucks weren't very active right away in July when we turned out the bucks for breeding time, which is understandable. Kilber says 80% are twins, which he says is unusually high and very good. He's also had four sets of triplets, which isn't so good since one usually has problems and needs more care. Kilber says as soon as he's done with sheep in April, he'll start calving. They also raise pygmy goats. Up next on Ag Week TV, is spring close? We'll have your agro weather outlook for the week. And later, find out why this steer at NDSU has a hole in the side of his stomach. North Country Marketing represents manufacturers of agricultural, light industrial, and lawn and garden equipment, and we're looking for a national service technician to join our team. Headquartered out of West Fargo, North Dakota, the right candidate will receive a competitive salary, full benefits package, paid holidays, paid vacation, retirement package, and company vehicle. Some overnight travel is required. We're looking for someone with a proven track record, five years of minimum experience, and a strong agricultural background. Small engine repair experience a plus. Send cover letter and resume to Stu at northcountrymarketing.biz. As a manufacturer, if you don't actually farm, there's so many places where you go wrong if you really don't have a true gut feeling for the end result. From the seed placement, fertilizer placement, packing, weigh scales, variable rates, everything that we have is put there to make you more money. At the end of the day, we guarantee that with Super Seed Guarantee. Tightline Drainage is the Red River Valley's most trusted name for tile. Tightline uses the Port Hydromax plow and also Port Hydromax trenchers for installing our laterals and mainline accurately. The science behind drain tile proves healthier plant growth and greater yields. Tightline Drainage also sells pipes, fittings, tiling plows, land tillage equipment, and more. Tightline Drainage is owned and operated by experienced agricultural professionals who understand the need for progressive agricultural practices. Call Tightline Drainage for a free drainage design today at 701-235-1900.
Say goodbye to expensive window treatments and Saturdays filled with dusting. Minn Kota Windows offers blinds between the glass and select window styles and sliding patio doors. With low E glass, they're even more energy efficient. They're easy to operate, have a clean, efficient look, and control privacy, light, and heat. And the best part is, they're safe for kids and pets. Blinds between the glass from Minn Kota Windows. Midwest built, Midwest tough, guaranteed for life. Minn Kota Windows, windows for your this is Dennis Beliski with exciting news. The next Grand Forks area equipment and truck auction will be indoors at the Alaris Center March 23rd. Demand for good used equipment is always strong. Buy straight out and use our auction to sell your trades or turn no longer needed units into working capital before spring planning. Strong marketing, online bidding, great facilities, and knowledgeable auctioneers will deliver the best possible returns. Decades of knowledge, steady innovation, and top results. The auction is March 23rd, advertising deadline February 23rd. At the end of this El Nino winter, we're starting to get some really interesting weather patterns. I mean, when is the weather not interesting? But the fading El Nino is doing some interesting things. Little snap of cold air coming into the northern plains this weekend, just as quickly moving out. The polar jet stream got this really peculiar little dippity do, which will be very cold, but a fairly narrow area of cold weather over the eastern U.S., while some California mild stuff this week starts floating into parts of the northern plains and gives many areas is a break from the cold. The cold will linger around the Great Lakes, stormy weather possible along the eastern seaboard. And as we get toward the end of the week, a little bulge in the jet stream, which is actually eventually going to start turning into a little bit of a west coast bulge. And with the big powerful surge of wind coming in from the Pacific, that is expected to build up. Interesting pattern taking shape for the second week, 21st through the 27th, as that high pressure ridge builds up along the west coast in a big wavy pattern. High pressure west, low pressure east will make it cold around the Great Lakes, stormy is still along the eastern seaboard, and a whole lot of warm, dry weather across the western United States and the western part of Canada. So here's what this means for the actual weather conditions, all right? Here's what we're looking in terms of the forecast. This week, fairly dry weather in the southwest, Pacific Northwest, the usual rainy thing, down to about San Francisco, Southern California, the El Nino has not brought much rain. Very dry weather over the southwest. Looks like a pretty big rain system sometime this week in the southeast. And because of the presence of the Arctic air, there will be lots of lake effect snows in the Great Lakes area. And then, of course, along the eastern seaboard, the northeast looks fairly snowy. Here in the northern plains, there will be some scattered areas of light snow, but I don't anticipate any big storms. As we move into the second week with that big high pressure ridge building up out west, a lot of warm and dry weather over the western states. West coast rain will be limited to the far western edge of the coast. There could be some showers, some rains down around L.A. and San Diego and across parts of the south, but I don't look for anything super heavy. The Southeast will continue to be rainy. The Great Lakes will continue to be snowy. Northern Plains area doesn't look like the middle part of February is going to bring much precipitation at all. It is looking fairly dry. Elsewhere around the world, one thing of note, the nice rains will continue for many areas of Central and South America. Brazil in particular looking like it will have some nice rains and parts of Argentina will be getting a pickup there. Lots of beans down in that area and the weather's looking pretty good. The main message for the continental United States, dry and warm across the west. Wet weather will continue in the east, around the Great Lakes and the southeast, and along the eastern seaboard, leaving not much going on right in the middle part of the country. Little snow here and there, but not very much. Commitment. You need it to succeed on the farm. It's total dedication to the land, family, and community. It's more than a way to make a living. It's a way of life. You've had it since the first time you ran your hands through the soil, held bale hay, or rode along in the combine. Your commitment. It's as strong as your family's trust, as honest as each long day you put in, and as pure as the opportunity that comes with every tomorrow. It's how we build our bins. With proven design, superior structural integrity, a lifetime warranty, and a promise to stand with you no matter what storms come your way. The harvest will always be protected, so you can sell when it's right for you, your family, and your farm. Commitment. It's why we can say, there's nothing standard about Superior.
time to demand more. With microessentials, you get more from every acre. Through our fusion technology, only microessentials combines four vital nutrients into one powerful granule, ensuring uniform nutrient distribution and increased nutrient uptake. The innovation behind our fusion technology means you'll grow stronger, healthier plants. Microessentials, get more from every acre. In today's marketplace, maximizing your harvest is more valuable than ever. Improve the efficiency of your operation by adding a Crary Air Reel to your harvester today. A continuous stream of high-velocity air quickly feeds crop back to the auger, getting your crop off the cutter bar and into the header. This minimizes shattering and reduces the amount of header loss. At harvest time, every second counts, and every bean counts, so you can count on Crary. We believe in a fair and balanced approach to state and federal regulation. Proposed changes to OSHA's anhydrous ammonia policy, EPA's Waters of the U.S., the Clean Air Act, and endangered species are a few examples of what we are facing. The one-size approach doesn't work for North Dakota. Agriculture Commissioner Doug Goring wants to work with you to protect our state. Go to our website to see the latest issues that affect not only agriculture today, but for future generations. Ag Week TV, sponsored by Peterson Farm Seed. Welcome back to Ag Week TV. We are here at NDSU at the Animal Nutrition and Physiology Center. And joining us now, we have Matt Kraus. He is an NDSU student, a grad student, yes. by the way. And we're here with, this is Hiccup. Yes. And he is one of your steers, and he's a, he's a very special steer to you guys. Yes, he's a cannulated steer, as you guys can see. And so he's one of our research animals that we use. Um, and very beneficial in terms of studying how they utilize forage, what they're consuming when they're out on the range. And this is pretty amazing because I've seen this before and when I tell people about this, they don't really believe me that the steer has a hole in the side of his stomach. We just expose the, the rumen epithelium and then we place the cannula in and the skin heals right around the cannula. So there's, it's not an extensive surgery or elaborate surgery. And he'll have this the rest of his life? Yes. Well, why don't you show us? You can take the plug out and we yeah. can actually see what's inside of his stomach. This whole plug comes out and all of a sudden now we're into the rumen. And okay. he doesn't feel that. I noticed he didn't move at all. Yeah, no, he does not feel that at all. And um, just completely kind of exposes his uh, rumen and all the forage that he's been eating. So as you can see in there, he's on a uh, diet of grass hay and you can just see all the hay that's in there. And this is a, like a fermentation vat. So all that hay is going to be sitting in there for about 48 hours. And the microbial population that's within the rumen is going to start digesting all of these fibrous particles so that they can advance through the digestive tract. He's really full. I've seen this before and it wasn't... He's really full, yeah. And so, you know, even then, if you want to, you can just kind of go in a little deeper. And as you get further to the bottom, it becomes more liquidy because that's where all the oh, fluid is. Okay. So then you take it and go to the bottom and you can come out and there's a lot more wow. forage and grass and fluid versus what's on the top too. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll try it. Yep. Okay, I didn't go that far. Can I go farther? Mm -hmm. You could pretty much almost go all the way to your shoulder. It's hot in there. <laughs> Tell us what we're looking at here. Well, what we're looking at, we took some of the rumen fluid that we got out of hiccup and um, we put it under a microscope. And you can see some of those bacteria moving across, those very large like that would be one of the protozoa within the rumen. Okay, and then we have, you know, back here you can see little cellular microbes. And they all have different functions towards the same goal of digesting the forage and um, providing utilizable end products that the steer then utilizes for his own energy and his own gain. Matt Kraus, a grad student here at NDSU. Uh, thanks for joining us today and Hiccup, a special thanks to you and for <laughs> being a really good boy today. <laughs> Ahead on iWeek TV, Jonathan Knudsen has some advice on preparing for tough times in agriculture. How did we become the region's largest independent seed company? By taking a very simple but powerful stand. We will sell no seed that we wouldn't be happy to plant on our own farm. Peterson Farm Seed. 
Stand tall. The North Dakota Soybean Council invests checkoff dollars to increase soybean demand, increase yields, and open new markets. The soybean checkoff has resulted in stronger prices and higher yielding varieties. Checkoff dollars fund research to bring solutions to farmers' greatest production challenges. Global demand for North Dakota soybeans for human consumption, animal feed, and commercial use has never been greater. Checkoff dollars, investing in a profitable future for North Dakota soybean farmers. Dig, lay, and bury drain tile all in one pass with the Crary Tile Pro Plow. The Crary Tile Pro Plow lays tile up to 7 feet deep with boot sizes of 4 to 12 inches. Advantages of installing drain tile to your field provides increased overall yield, improved soil moisture levels, and controls soil erosion. It pays to tile with a Crary Tile Pro. To locate a dealer near you, visit www.crarytilepro.com. Where do you go for the latest news in agriculture? AgWeek Magazine. Reaching over 30,000 farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana. AgWeek provides the most up-to-date information on the markets, the trends, and the people who make it all happen. We're your source for news, not fluff. Dependable. Trusted. AgWeek. Subscribe today by calling 1-800-811-2580. Upgrade your trailer to electric with the Rolltech electric system from AgriCover. Strong, flexible pivot arms and motor mount rotate and telescope, allowing the roll tube to rise and flex over heaped loads. The positive automatic lock is impossible to back off to control the flow of grain. This integrated system uses one wireless remote to operate up to 10 tarps and hoppers, keeping your driver out of the dust, rain, and harm's way. See the Rolltech system in action at an AgriCover dealer near you. Some say the ag economy and conditions are signaling tough times ahead. In this week's commentary, Jonathan Knudsen gives his thoughts. Fighting the last war is a military term. It means preparing for the next war based on what happened in the last one. That's usually a mistake. Wars can be very different. World War I was trenches and barbed wire. World War II was tanks and aircraft carriers. Older Aggies remember the 70s and 80s. Debt, drought, poor crop prices, high interest rates. As an egg journalist, I don't want to fight the last war. I know the future will be different. But egg is cyclical, and problems of the past have a way of coming back. My next egg we cover will look at interest rates, which are rising again. Don't obsess over the past, but give it some thought. Learn what went wrong and what good operators did to survive. That's not fighting the last war. That's just using common sense. For Egg Week, I'm Jonathan Knudsen. This week's photo of the week comes from Larry House. Beautiful shot. It was taken north of Lidgerwood, North Dakota. We want to see your pictures. Email your best shot to photos at agweek.com. We need your name, location, and let us know what's going on in the picture. Thanks for watching this week's edition of AgWeek TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com. We'll see you back here next week.